The Drive. We are here today at the Cam Henderson Center for Marshall Women's Basketball. The Thundering Herd getting set to take on Georgia State. So what a better excuse to get out of the office today and take the show on the road. Paul wow. Swan and Bill Cornwell with you here at the Henderson Center. We're going to be watching Marshall hopefully clinch a outright regular season championship later on this evening at the Cam Henderson Center. And it's going to be history in the making tonight, Bill, because it's been a long yeah. time coming for Marshall women's basketball. The last time that the Thundering Herd actually was in the NCAA tournament, Bill, you were a you were a younger Bill Cornwell then. I actually had some hair then. Now you had you you still have hair, but you had some more hair. Yeah. Now, as it was the 1997 yeah. Southern Conference Championship. And that was Marshall's lone NCAA tournament appearance. But we got to go back even further, even Bill. Even further back. We got to go back to not only a different coach, but we have to go to the 80s to see when Marshall last was able to clinch a regular yep. season championship. And boy, did the Thundering Herd clinch a lot of them. From 1985 to 1989, Marshall dominated the regular season of the Southern Conference, just couldn't get it done yep. in the tournament. Exactly. Judy Southern had some great teams. And, Paul, if you'll remember back then, if you won the regular season, you got to host the tournament, the conference tournament. I remember about two or three of those Southern Conference women's tournaments being played here in the Henderson Center. And it always seemed like Marshall, when they'd get to the final, they couldn't get her done. But you know what? The last year... The Marshall was in the Southern Conference was 1997, and in that year, uh, Coach Sarah Evans Moore led the herd to that Southern Conference Tournament Championship in the automatic bid for the NCAA tournament. The herd lost at Colorado in that uh, first game in the NCAA, but uh, that was the one and only NCAA tournament game for Marshall women's basketball. Heard hoping to do that again, and already some magical moments have been made this year. I know that's kind of that's kind of flowery language here. I mean, it's it's true though. It Marshall is. has a first-year coach that has secured the most wins in program history. You know, the previous mark was set by Coach Sarah Evans Moore, and that was 15 in the 92-93 season. That was a 15 win first year coach and you think oh hey that's that's a pretty good season yep. and of course this Marshall women's team has shattered that with 21 wins and 21 and 6 overall in not only getting a lot of attention social media basketball prognosticators a lot of attention from national media as well Marshall on the verge of with one more win or one more Troy State loss whatever happens first Marshall's going to clinch the outright regular season championship. And I'll go back a little ways to Tony Kemper. I had a conversation with him once, and he's like, look at the banners over here. We, we got to get it done because we don't have much as, as banners are concerned. Well, make room. There's going to be a banner put up real soon over here where the women definitely – need to put a little bit more history up there. And not only that, but uh, this is a, would be the second Marshall team to win a Sun Belt Championship. Obviously, number one was men's soccer last year. So uh, you get at least the regular season done tonight, then you can say we are the second Marshall team to be a Sun Belt champion in the short time that Marshall has been in the league. That's the goal here. And of course, Track and field obviously was the yep. first program to actually right. produce champions. Individual champions. Individual right. champions, but still, that's the, I thought it would be soccer first before yeah. anybody, and we had to wait an extra year for that. So track and field's been doing some amazing things, bringing home gold medals, individual. There's a lot of good Olympic sports in this league. But you want to get your three core sports, and maybe now four, that baseball finally has a home. You want to get basketball and football and baseball winning champions. I guess you got to go five or six core sports now because soccer is definitely a core sport. I don't want Chris Grassy coming up here later and telling me, you know, what he thinks about that. And I'm going to say, hey, Coach Huff, time to catch up, buddy. And <laughs> I know he wants to. 
But uh, you, you know, know, he might be here tonight with the students, so I, I, you could go I, walk I, right down there and tell actually, him that. Got to get a lot of love to Coach Huff because Coach Huff uh, recorded a video message yesterday, and it was put on social media saying, "Hurt fans, get out here and support these ladies as they make some history on Tuesday night." So thank you, Coach Huff, and. Uh, uh, he's very supportive of all his uh, fellow coaches and all the teams here at Marshall. I like how you saved yourself after you said, Coach Huff's got to start no. catching up. I nah. love how you saved yourself nah, there. I, I say it out of love, and he knows that. He knows that. Does he? Does he really? Oh, he does. We believe. should ask him one time. No, he knows that. We should ask him one time. He, he knows me, and he knows that. He knows you. Okay, we'll ask him real soon about that. Yeah. And, of course, we're here at the Henderson Center today. Fans are already showing up. Well, we got about 45 minutes to go, and – Fans are already making their way here. It's also the play for K game. Yep. So a lot of pink going on along with the green. So a different color clash tonight here at the Henderson Center. And that's all right. And we got the band right beside us. We so, do. <laughs> you know, usually I vacate this spot when the band shows up. Yeah. Uh, I'm stuck for a while. Exactly. I'm now, stuck here for a while. Uh, you know, these uh, pretty good for Marshall. They've already worn them a couple of times on the road. And obviously they won. Marshall's done little to uh, to dissuade me from thinking they'll win ag again tonight. I mean, even when they had to fight to win against ULM, and that was a 99-90 to victory, yeah, I never felt that, okay, Marshall's in trouble here. Even when Marshall was down in that game, I never felt that the Thundering Herd was in a position where it was going to lose, and so far so good. I would like to see the Herd, though, get off to a fast start and just stay hot. Because Caldwell, Coach Caldwell has talked about the, I'm okay with the slow start because I'd rather have it at the beginning than the usual end where the team will fade. Yeah. Hopefully tonight the team knows what's, on, what's in store for them. They know what's at stake. If they can get it done, they know. There are, now it's time to go ahead and just clinch that outright. That would be a huge deal yeah. and a, a great bit of momentum going into the tournament. And, you know, that, that last game was quite imp impressive, Paul, because – First quarter, uh, the herd uh, fell down 17 points. I mean, it uh, they were getting really outplayed by at least a couple of really good players for Louisiana Monroe. They were on fire, but they couldn't sustain it. Second quarter comes, here comes the herd. The press is taken over, the depth's taken over, and uh, before halftime, they eventually tied the game. Uh, they were down by two, and then they just kept on rolling in the second half and uh, pulled it out for a. a very significant win, 99 to 90. Final home stand, the regular season coming up here. We're also here at the Henderson Center. Unfortunately, I don't think we can be here Friday because there's so much going on on Friday. Well, Herd fans are going to have a difficult time choosing between baseball, basketball, and everything else let, that's going on. Let's think about this. At the same time, at the same time, you got softball, the opening baseball game at the Jack. And then at 6 o'clock, you got Georgia Southern here with Marshall Women's Basketball. It is a full day of sports on a Friday here around the can and the ball, the two ball fields. The two in, the, in softball is improved and brand new baseball field. Yeah, and then the herd on the, the road, the men, and we'll have that game on 93-7 of the dog. We'll have Marshall Baseball on ESPN 94.1 and AM 9.30. So plan accordingly. If you want to hear basketball, just lock it on 93.7 The Dog. You want to hear baseball, tune in ESPN 94.1 and AM 9.30. Facility's looking good. I got a chance to go tour a little bit of it this afternoon, and it's, it's looking really good. They're putting in the final touches or as many of the final touches as they can to get it ready to open on Friday. So I think Hurt fans that haven't had a chance to yet experience what the stadium is like from the inside are going to be pleasantly surprised. And I think the feedback I've gotten from most people, including older Hurt fans, is they can't believe it's finally here. It's real. It's real, and we're going to get to experience it this weekend. Uh, you know, it, the, I would say they're, for the most part, ready to go. And I, I know they're much more ready than a memory from back in 1990 when the Huntington Cubs had their opening game at St. Cloud Commons, and 15 minutes before the ball game, they were still nailing the outfield wall signs into the, uh, I know that Marshall's way ahead of that. No, the night and day. If, night and day. If you remember for older fans that might have been around that 
that was wasn't that at the time the oldest grandstand in America? I baseball it grandstand. Was, it, it it was something. Well, it, it was a tw it was a 20th century construction, but it looked like it was in the 19th century. Yeah. So it that, really did. Um, I don't know the exact date on that, but it it was definitely a product of a, a an era gone by. And as quaint as it was, <laughs> it, and I'm, I'm being polite, as quaint as it was, it never really measured up. I no. mean, the memories are great, the, but it never measured it, up. You know, Marshall baseball and, is real now. And, of course, the biggest failing there that you didn't have a clubhouse there, and that's what doomed Huntington being in the Appalachian League. That was, uh, you know, you, their clubhouse, you had to walk across two baseball fields to get to it, and uh, that just wasn't... That ain't going to happen. No, that's not an issue now. No. That's not an issue. No, so it's not. Colcats will follow the thundering herd, and that's definitely a plus in Huntington and Marshall's favor here with the new facility. No doubt. We're here at the Cam Anderson Center. Great excuse just to get out and come to the game tonight, leave work early. Don't tell management that we did this. But we're here today at the Henderson Center for the Play for K game and, of course, the opportunity for Marshall to outright clinch the regular season championship. I know the trophy isn't here, but boy, it would have been nice to have that on hand just in case, just in case. You know, so what? we can see the herd hoisted up. You know what, Paul? At the least, maybe they could cut the nets down. That'd be nice. Or would you, would you at least leave the nets alone and go? Okay, we got more to go. That'll be interesting to see what the uh, the thinking is. Yeah, we got yeah. more to go, and they have a game coming up in a couple of days. So let's. Uh, Let's save the equipment guys some hassle just a little bit. But we will get our first break in. You're going to hear the drum kits ready to go. They don't care. They, they're just going to bang their drum all day right here in our broadcast position. They don't want to play. They just want to bang on the drum all That's day. That's all they want to do. They just want to play the drum all day, however that song went. More coming up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Hey, Tri-State. Frank's Place is where friends hang out with friends. Stop on by for happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. and a lot of daily specials. If you're a sports fan, we have what you want. From the biggest game in professional football, NBA, NCAA basketball, and the NHL. First responders, stop by Frank's Place and check out the specials we have for you. Frank's Place, located at the River Place Plaza, next to Fratelli's. Check us out on Facebook for weekly updates and specials. Frank's Place, your home away from home. Stalwart Insurance is the name for insurance in the tri-state. They are committed to delivering tailored benefit solutions with thoughtful, strategic planning with valuable professional services. Stop by or call Stalwart Insurance for your homeowner's insurance needs. Stalwart Insurance is located right beside Kenny Queen Hardware on Route 10 in Barbersville. Call Stalwart Insurance anytime at 304-552-3883. That's 304-552-3883. Or visit them online at stalwartinsurance.com. Com. You know, there's something about a truck you can count on and that SUV that's been on every family vacation for a decade. TikTok Tire and Uniroyal know your truck or family car is only as reliable as the tires underneath it. And that's why Uniroyal made the Laredo AT Tire and HT Tire to be the tires you trust. You know, like you trust your truck, your SUV, or TikTok Tire. Uniroyal Laredo AT and Laredo HT. See where 130 years of value takes you. For more information, stop into TikTok Tire, 2102 3rd Avenue, Huntington, right across from the stadium or call 304 525 7831. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Carol. She's more focused on hitting a high note than the car in front of her. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates North Park, Illinois. Giovanni's has great Italian dishes. Spaghetti with meat sauce, lasagna, ravioli, manicotti, and baked lasagna. Giovanni's has the best sandwiches around from the Stromboli, Italian sub, calzones, and their signature Big Red. All dinners will be served with hot garlic bread or Italian rolls. Giovanni's Pizza, fresh, hot, and tasty. Have it delivered right to your door. Giovanni's. The Italian place to be. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. 
Welcome back. Paul Swan, your host. Bill Cornwell's with me as well. We just took off early from work today and decided to come over here. Marshall's playing a basketball game today. Big basketball Big game. Big basketball game today. So we're here at the Cam Anderson Center, and a lot of fans are already showing up. Hopefully you'll be here as well as the Thundering Heart has an opportunity to clinch the outright regular season championship. To do that, you got to win one of the next two or hope that Troy loses whichever happens first, a Marshall win or a Troy loss, and Marshall can claim the outright championship. Georgia State's going to be a tough opponent for the Thundering Herd. They're seventh right now in the standings. They are 15 and 12. They're 9 and 7 in league play. Contrast that to Marshall, which is 15 and 1, that only lost against James Madison here at home. 21 and 6 overall. They're taking on a Georgia State team that's a little bit different than the last time these two teams met. That's something that Coach Caldwell talked about earlier in her presser, that you, know, you can look at the film, you can look at this team, but it's different, and she thinks that her squad's different as well. But don't expect Marshall to do too many things different. She wants to make sure that her team is making the other team adjust to her. That's been her philosophy all season long. She reaffirmed that on Monday. And we well know that teams in this league are having a, ter a tough time adjusting to uh, the way Marshall substitutes. That's the biggest thing because as new players come in, the players for the opposing team on the court have to figure out, who in the heck do I guard? Who, who, do, I, who do I watch for? It's always a big project trying to get that. I actually sat behind the bench at the last home game, the Louisiana afternoon home game, and you can see the confusion among the coaching staff, the assistant coaches and such, trying to get these teams set up because Marshall's throwing you really for a loop when you got four and five people checking in the game and not just once for like four minutes, like two minutes. I mean, they, a lot of times they're just in the game for two minutes. So uh, uh, that and, and just the overall excellence of the way Marshall plays, the style they play, pressure defense, lots of tempo, and uh, those are really have been a, a revelation in, on, in a bad way for the rest of the Sun Belt Conference this year. I'm sure the league eventually will figure at least a workaround, but you have to approach this like a hockey game. Yeah. It's a shift change. Yep. You have to adjust your shift to meet the other team. And right now, basketball teams are not equipped to confront this style of play. What are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to change your five on the floor? Coach Caldwell doesn't care what your five looks like. She only cares about what her five looks like. And so I think other teams are going to have to maybe make that a shift as well and not worry so much about what the matchup is one-on-one. -on -one. It's just what what can your unit do and what can they do as a, as a collective group to force yeah. the other unit into mistakes. And that's what Marshall likes to do, play high tempo, force mistakes, turnovers, shoot the three. It's a fast-paced basketball yeah. brand. Going back to Georgia State, they're in an interesting situation themselves for the simple fact they're in a four-way tie in the middle of the standing. So there's a lot to be decided before we go to Pensacola next week. And, uh, you know, they, they're going to have a tough time tonight, obviously, but they're trying to get out of that log jam in the middle of the standing. Yeah, while well, Marshall's just trying to secure its spot, already a double by the Thundering Herd is secured. I think a quicker, easier path to the championship game through the regular season. And if Marshall can clinch the outright championship tonight in the regular season, what you're going to see is Marshall's going to play the first game every day. So Marshall will be up first on the women's session. And that's great to have. You have that consistency. You'll know ahead of time when you're going to play, and you're going to have a little bit better of an idea of what to expect because this will be Coach Caldwell's yeah. first run at the tournament. And, and that's, another, that's another place that she hasn't experienced just yet, and that's the Sun Belt Basketball Tournament. And, of course, what does that all mean playing early? Well, that means you get the most rest. You get the most preparation time before your next game. And, of course, the way things are setting up, Marshall would only have to win three games to win the Sun Belt Tournament Championship. That's what you want to do. That's exactly what you're trying to do here. And it, would it matter if you're the two seed? Not really. But 
the way you've been playing all season long, you want to go ahead and jokingly, she's going to Cody Road this tonight and finish her story because Marshall has worked so hard to get to this point. You didn't come this far just to come this far is usually the saying. And so I expect this team to come out tonight. If they're not flat, they'll put Georgia State away and and finish business here tonight. That's what at least I want to see exactly. from this team. We're here today at the Cam Anderson Center. As you can tell, the band's warming up. At least the percussion section. Just the percussion section. Just the, yeah, the other rest of them are here. Yeah, we are being serenaded by the drum section. And, of course, the students moved over here to the end zone because they're going to do this all game long and annoy the other team tonight. And I, I, I feel like the student atmosphere is different for a women's game yeah. compared to the men. It, it feels different. I know they're doing a few different things, but there's definitely been a sense of, of energy from the students tonight. And from, you know, watching a few games here, they have definitely made a difference in the atmosphere here at the Henderson Center. You know what? Actually, I think they're going to have the students down on the, the uh, east end tonight because they've got uh, well, those are taped areas. off. Remember, the football team's going to be here as oh, well. Oh, that's right. Well, that, they're they're running. And they're going to yeah, they're going to bring some other. Uh, they're going to bring footballs. Coming. I, I think some of the others uh, Olympic that. sports are coming. I love that because those football guys, they're some of the best basketball fans. If you're watching them at a men's game or a women's game, they get into it, and and they, that will help. I, I love the fact that Coach Huff has those guys getting over here and supporting these ladies. Yeah. So those sections are roped off, and of course, yeah, you're going to have an influx of uh, student athletes from different programs. Not just football, but the other sports as well. Any school that can get the other teams yep. to come participate is ahead of the game. And I think Marshall is right now ahead of the game because it's hard to get participation and, from and, other sports to come I, support basketball. And I think they understand what's good for one is good for all. We're here today. Cam Anderson Center, Paul Swan, Bill Cornwell with you. We're getting set for Marshall taking on Georgia State. It should be a fun one. It's going to be a loud one for sure as the percussion guy is trying to tune up as we speak. We go to that a lot. You know why? Because it's louder in person underneath. Yeah, it's uh, like being in a, uh, a cave. It's louder. We're in a cave. The echo, they knew what they were doing when they put them over here. All right, we're going to take a quick time and I'll come back. We will continue on with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Get ready for March Madness at the Marshall Hall of Fame Cafe. Score big with their unlimited pizza madness deal. During all live tournament play, buy any regular pizza and get a free side of boneless wings. Enjoy the game with a drink as the Marshall Hall of Fame Cafe is also offering $2 tall domestics. Join them for the ultimate game day experience this March Madness with great food, drinks, and a lively atmosphere. It's the place to be on game day. The Marshall Hall of Fame Cafe on the corner of Fun and 3rd Avenue. Working Man Store in Huntington. Check out the biggest inventory of scrubs in West Virginia, featuring brands such as Healing Hands, Dickies, Cherokee, and Med Couture at the best price. Working Man Store has one of the largest selections of big and tall shirts, jackets, and jeans in the area. Working Man Store is the king of blue jeans with Levi's, Dickies, Carhartt, Lee, and Wranglers in sizes up to 72. And Working Man Store has the best selection of men's work boots and casual shoes anywhere at the best price. Working Man Store, open every day at 140 5th Avenue, Huntington. Now is the time to add on a new bathroom or remodel your old one with the latest up-to-date bathroom fixtures from Mutual Wholesalers, 710 Fifth Street, Huntington. Come in today to Mutual Wholesalers' beautiful showroom and see how your new bathroom will look. Check out Acre by Max. Have a new bathroom this year. Mutual Wholesalers, locally owned and operated, 710 Fifth Street, Huntington. Call 304-525-9118. You've cut back on everything, and you're still coming up short at the end of the month. Give your local State Farm agent a call for a free discount double check. They'll show you how something as simple as combining car and home policies can save you hundreds of dollars a year. Being there to help keep more of your money is why your local State Farm agent is here. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In Huntington, Jeff Smith, 304-781-1234. In Milton, Eric Dodson, 304-390-4515. And in Wayne, Vicki Tabor, 304-272-5149.
The more vulnerable among us can fall victim to abuse, neglect, and financial exploitation. When navigating your way out, it doesn't have to feel like a maze. Assistance is available from Adult Protective Services. To report neglect or abuse, call 800-352-6513. Sponsored by the Administration for Community Living, West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources Bureau for Social Services, the West Virginia Broadcasters Association, and this station. This project was supported by the Administration for Community Living, a and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, as part of a financial assistance award totaling $383,493, with 75 percentage funded by ACL HHS and 25 percentage in the amount of $85,236 funded by state government sources. The contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of nor an endorsement by ACL HHS or the U.S. government eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Metro Community Federal Credit Union has been serving the Huntington community for 70 years and is proud to announce our newest location in Lavalette is now open. Wayne County residents, you now have access to a modern banking facility, a full range of services, advanced technology, expert financial advice, and even a smart coffee kiosk cafe. Learn more about Metro Community Federal Credit Union online at metrocommunityfcu.com or visit us today on 5th Street Road. Equal housing lender, member NCUA. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday edition of The Drive. It's ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Don't forget our text line is open. It's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Paul Swan, Bill Cornwell's with us as well as the Thundering Herd getting set tonight on the women's side. Take on Georgia State. Marshall looking to clinch the outright championship in the regular season, something that hasn't happened in regular season since the late 80s in the Southern Conference. And, of course, the men are just trying to stay out of the bottom four, Bill, as there is a strong possibility Marshall could tumble all the way down to those bottom four spots. Not the very bottom, but you will avoid, honestly, if you win a game, I think you will avoid the situation in which you would have to play that first day. If you lose out, you might be playing that first day, and that would not be good for Marshall basketball to play on that first day. Yeah, they're in a tie for seventh right now, and they really do need to get a win. Uh, And they they got an opportunity tomorrow night, Paul, if they can shoot the ball because they're, they're facing a team in Georgia Southern that is doing just as poorly as the herd is, they have they have lost six out of seven. Uh, it's been a long time since they've gotten a win, and uh, they are struggling. They've only won six games all year. All those six of those wins are in conference play. You know, they went winless in the non-conference uh, part of the schedule, Paul. So uh, it's going to be interesting to, to see if Marshall can take advantage of uh, an ailing Georgia Southern team. But, of course, the herd's just as ailing as far as the way they're playing right now. Marshall's in the midst of a losing streak, and here's a funny stat for you. They're three and seven away from the Henderson Center. They're one and three on neutral location, but three and seven away from the Henderson Center. That is not good at all. The herd just cannot win on the road. And we've seen them go into a place where I thought they would win against Coastal Carolina and just lay a... Egg. They laid an egg. It and, was and, terrible. And I mean, that that I'm not saying it's a, a horrible loss, but it was a bad loss. It, it was a bad loss after two weeks before you had beaten them by 17 points, and really, basically, it was a 25, 30 point game here at the Henderson Center. Went down there, and, and the, the of course Marshall in the midst of uh, shooting woes, and that game fell right in the middle of that, and which has continued. Again, if Marshall could just start hitting some shots and consistently, uh, you know they're. Um, they got, they're going to win a game. Uh, 
Coach D'Antoni talked about it in his presser yesterday. You know, they broke down shots from the Appalachian game, and he said that, that of the 62 shots that they charted, 50 of them were good shots, but they only made about maybe 12 or 13 of them. You got to do better than that. He, as, as he said, you got to make 25, 30 of those quality shots if you're shooting 60 good shots. If they were good, they didn't go in. They didn't go in. Yeah, if they're good, if they're so that, good, they didn't go in. He was. It's, it's a it's a philosophy issue, I think, right yeah. now with Marshall basketball. I think the world of Dan D'Antoni, and he's a tremendous basketball mind. But when you cannot hit the three point shot, and your offense is predicated on three-point shots, layups, and free throws. You better make more layups, or you better make more free throws if the three-pointer isn't going down. I will say this. He was encouraged by the way that the herd played defense against Appalachian State, which is an excellent team, and maybe on the way to doing what the Marshall women are doing, winning the regular season in the Sun Belt. But you, you got to get it going on both ends of the court. You got to start making the shots. You can't just win on defense. No, you cannot. It helps. If you can't outscore anybody, you're going to have to win on defense. you got a problem. And you look at what happened last time that Marshall met against Georgia Southern and Georgia State. Georgia Southern game was a 79-74 win. It was a close, tight contest. The game against Georgia State, 77-68 contest. It was a closer, tight game. Then Marshall, a couple of weeks ago, blows out Coastal 91-74. Do it again, you lose 67-74 on the road, and it hasn't been good since. The offense is just not let, not there. Marshall in the last two games scored 58 points each. 58 against JMU, 58 against App State. The offense and is killing the thundering herd, and, and those shots, yeah. missed shots, three-point shots that are missed. And when Dan D'Antoni's offense is cooking, why do they score? 80 85, 90, 93. That's what Marshall fans have come to expect. This team this year, with a couple of exceptions, just hadn't been able to do that. No. Not and not able to do that because you just didn't have the parts. And and Dan's, Dan's been very adamant about the fact they kind of got blindsided by Andrew Taylor's departure. They assumed that he was going to be back for a final year, and obviously he's gone. They really don't have a true point guard, and it, it's it's killed them. It it's, really has killed them. Well, I'm not going to say Andrew Taylor's killed him as much, or his absence has killed him as the last game, 3 of 23 from the three-point line. Right. Cam Kerfman, 1 of 8. Now, Cam, Cam is struggling. He's struggling Obina's, mightily. Obina's still been struggling. Uh, you know, he had good effort against Appalachian, but still got to make shots. And, and, and if you watch those guys in their game right now, they're not, not shooting with good technique. Obina's uh, falling away. Uh, a lot of cam shots are off balance, going to the side. And that's a lot of the reason they're not falling. Here's a guy at the top 10 three-point shooter for you, and he's going through a slump right now. It's not just him. He's no. not the only reason here. You, know, you look at where the Thundering Herd's trying to find its offense, and Kevon Voiles has produced Cam Kerfman, even with going one of eight in that game, was able to manage 19 points, of course. He was successful in a few other areas, but that's it right now. Obino with eight, Nate Martin had five. He did have 14 rebounds, so give him credit. He was working the defensive side, and if you can't produce offensively, give me rebounds. And by the way, Nate finally is averaging a double-double because he is at 10 rebounds exactly per game now, along with his double-figure scoring. So the Thundering Herd, a lot of issues, and I don't know if the road is going to make it any better going into this one tomorrow. I don't know. But this, I'm, not, I'm not confident yeah. in just yet. They're going to have to win convincingly. If it's close, if it's tight, you'll take the win and get out of there. That, but yeah. it's got to be convincing because that's just not going to get it done for me going into and the this, tournament. But this is a winnable game. Uh, is it? I, I, yeah, I mean, is it? It, it is. It the is. Coastal Carolina was a winnable game as well. well. I don't I mean, even want to use that kind of language right now. But, but here's the thing about both the opponents this, this week. If you'll go back to the games that were here in Huntington, both teams have very quick guards, and uh, that's the one thing you're going to have to watch out for. 
they love taking marshals in, in, in some cases slower players to the they dragging them to the to the hole and uh, that's one thing that again a little bit more emphasis on defense has to make you aware of tomorrow night is watch out for those quick guards for Georgia Southern on Friday night the, the very quick guards for Georgia State. Marshall in action tomorrow. We've got it for you. That's going to be right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930 and on 93.7. The dog, and of course, I'm not calling that a winnable game. It. I call Coastal Carolina a winnable game. Well, we all did. And I got burned on that. <laughs> and I, that was not a game I should have got burned on. Georgia Southern, Georgia State are going to be tough contests, and Marshall just hasn't been able to put it together on the road as of late. So until Marshall puts together a couple of wins, it's you flip the coin. I don't know what's going to happen here tomorrow night. But with that said, we do hope that the herd can get it turned around, and we'll have it for you coming up right here on ESPN 94.1 AM 930 and on 93.7 The Dog. This one here tonight at the Henderson Center, I'm sure Coach Caldwell is going to get mad at me if I called this one a winnable game, <laughs> but, it, but it should be yeah. as it's the play for K game coming up tonight as Marshall has done a really good job with promotion of the play for K game. Yeah, the merchandise, there's a lot of pink out here. Done it for years. Yeah, Marshall's done a really good job. When it comes to events like this, it, the Thundering Herd definitely makes this uh, mean something a little bit more. It doesn't seem like it's just lip service as, you know, you see a lot of pink tonight trying to bring attention. And the way the Thundering Herd's been playing right now, I think there's going to be a lot of attention on this one tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a sellout, but I expect a good crowd here well, tonight. It would be great if Marshall women could see a crowd just as good as the one the women saw when they came well, back from the road trip on Saturday with the men playing. Well, let me tell you that – the number of people already in this building is much more than what we used to see a lot of Marshall women's games when you might see about six or seven hundred. There's already well over a thousand people in here. Uh, I would hope that at least a couple thousand will be here on a, again, on a very unusual night because we're not used to seeing in the conference season Marshall play on a Tuesday. Very unusual day. And, and in fact, Coach uh, Caldwell mentioned that after the uh, win at Louisiana Monroe on the Saturday. I think it's beneficial, to not maybe for her, but I think it's beneficial for the program because a lot of people will be focusing on the men's game tomorrow night. True. And there will be a good crowd here if this was a Wednesday game. I don't doubt that a bit, but I think this is going to be a better crowd than it would be on a Wednesday. I don't know how many people are going to change their routine just yet on a Wednesday for a Marshall women's game. We're not there just yet for the men. I think, and Wednesday's church night. Yes. It's a known fact in this part of the country. Church night, very big on Wednesdays. And that hurts the gate to a degree. It's hurt the gate for years to a degree. But there are people who will skip Wednesday night to come see a Marshall men's game. I don't think we're there just yet with the women. I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And this team keeps winning. I don't think that's going to matter either. But I'm glad they're playing on a Tuesday night give the opportunity for the women to shine a little bit more. And, and I'll tell you this too, Paula, uh, just anecdotally, I know some friends, uh, they're planning on making the trip to Pensacola just to see the women play. Uh, you know, the uh, if the men do well, that would be a bonus, but they're actually making the trip to see the women play. Well, the good news is if the men have to play early and don't progress, the women will still be there. True. So it's a good ticket for you, depending on what happens with the men. Now, hopefully, the men can stay out of that bottom four. I would love the double buy. And there there was opportunity. There a couple was. Of weeks ago, there was opportunity. That's since passed. So now Marshall's trying to stay out of the bottom. They got to win one of these two to pretty much secure that spot. I'm not so sure. We'll see. And if they can get it done, I hope they can get both and just have a little bit of I know this is a dirty word for Dan. Momentum going into the tournament. That is that is a word Dan hey, does not want to hear. I know he don't want to hear it, but you know what? We're going to say it because you got to get on a roll. You got to find some way to get some confidence built up in these guys, which is not there right now. I don't know why he doesn't want to address that. It's you can't measure it, but it's it's real. 
It is real. It is real, and it, it falls into that confidence argument that he made the other day. You, know, you start winning some games. Hey, if you want to call it confidence, fine. Momentum, confidence, whatever you want to call it, Marshall needs one of those things. And to do so, Hurd's going to come out tomorrow night and win that game. I don't want to see a two- or three-point win. I'll take it. But I, I want to see a convincing win on the road. Show me that it's starting to you, put together. You want to see an explosion. I do. I want to uh, see an offensive explosion. An I want to see explosion. a tight defensive game. I want to see a offensive explosion. I want to see good shots. You can tell me they were good shots. That's fine. They didn't go in. <laughs> and if you're going to have to find somebody else, if someone's not hot, I'm not sure if I fall into the philosophy of shoot or shoot, I'll shoot my way out of this. If it's not going down, find someone else who is making it go down. You adjust, adapt a little bit better. Someone needs to do that. And so if someone's having an off night, find the guy who's not. That would help. Find the guy that's not. Uh, and and it, it, it would help, too, if you get some contributions off the bench. Uh, love to see Wyatt Fricks explode. You know, he's had some games where he kind of shown some, uh, some uh, uh, you know, some moments where he uh, could really uh, help, and he's helped this team at times. Uh, love to see uh, the continued growth of Ryan Nutter. Uh, I, I think that it's tough for a freshman to come in here and, and play the minutes lately that he's had to play. I mean, it's going to help him down the road, but uh, you'd love, just love to see him continue. Need those guys to produce. You need those guys to play. Need them to play. Not just produce. they got to be on the court to play to try to produce. Yep. I, I want to see more bench. And I want to see, again, the struggling Obina and Achille Killen, who we know has the ability. He needs a breakout game. Uh, he needs a 20, 25-point game and about a 10, 11 rebound game, maybe a couple of blocks. He needs to put one of those together. He hasn't been the same since he scored those um, th that that thirty point thirty game. against yeah. uh, Coastal Carolina. Yeah, he hasn't been the same. It's been that's exactly that. That was start of the month. We're here at the Cam Anderson Center. The lights are off already. The spotlights are on. We're getting closer to tip off as Marshall getting set to take on a team that's already faced in Georgia State. We'll come back our final time out here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Places where friends hang out with friends. Stop on by for happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. and a lot of daily specials. If you're a sports fan, we have what you want. From the biggest game in professional football, NBA, NCAA basketball, and the NHL. First responders, stop by Frank's Place and check out the specials we have for you. Frank's Place, located at the River Place Plaza, next to Fratelli's. Check us out on Facebook for weekly updates and specials. Frank's Place, your home away from home. Stalwart Stalwart Insurance is the name for insurance in the tri-state. They are committed to delivering tailored benefit solutions with thoughtful, strategic planning with valuable professional services. Stop by or call Stalwart Insurance for your homeowner's insurance needs. Stalwart Insurance is located right beside Kenny Queen Hardware on Route 10 in Barbersville. Call Stalwart Insurance anytime at 304-552-3883. That's 304-552-3883. Or visit them online at stalwartinsurance.com. Glockner's Too Easy initiative has returned for 2024. We're making it too easy to get more for your trade with our biggest cash offers. We pay more. Too easy to save time because Glockner has the fastest, most transparent five-star shopping experience around. Too easy to find the vehicle perfect for you as Glockner has the area's biggest pre-owned inventory. That's why it's too easy to buy a car at Glockner. We make it easy at Glockner.com. Are you looking for an in-demand career, or do you wish you would have chosen a different career path? Stop wishing and check out one of the many programs Ashland Community and Technical College has to offer, like radiography, industrial maintenance, surgical technology, criminal justice, and more. Plus, they offer 16-week, 12-week, and five-term classes to fit your already busy schedule. Don't wait. Every decision is a chance for a life-changing moment. Visit ashland.kctcs.edu to get started. 
Plum, Plum Tickle Boutique and Rise and Grind Food Truck located at 604 Belfont Road in Westwood gives you a great shopping experience with unique items and delicious food all in one location. Stop by Plum Tickle Boutique and Rise and Grind Food Truck in Westwood. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit SkyRizzi.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZI to learn more. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. One final time from the Cam Anderson Center, Paul Swan and Bill Cornwell with you. The Thundering Herd women in action tonight taking on Georgia State. Marshall trying to improve upon an already impressive 21 and 6 record, 15 and 1 in league play. A win tonight guarantees Marshall the outright Sun Belt Conference regular season championship. A loss tonight, and you got to win one more or hope that Troy loses to clinch that outright championship. And both teams right now, Marshall and Troy, five game win streaks. I don't look for Troy to lose. It's Marshall. Marshall's going to have to just go out and finish it and take yep. it and win it. And when talking to Coach Caldwell earlier yesterday, she said it's actually good that the team knows they have something to play for. They so do. I hope that this team comes out tonight. I expect a focused Marshall team to come out and know what's at stake for a win tonight. They have to know what's at stake tonight in front of a hopefully a, I mean, I'm not going to say a sellout, but no. we'll have a great crowd. It, it, it's going to be, it's a great crowd already. It's, it's a, a great, great crowd, crowd for Tuesday night. Yeah, and, you don't want to disappoint these people no. who have showed up. I don't think you would. No. But you're trying to attract a larger crowd, and if you get, you send them home happy with a win, you might see them on Friday again. Well, exactly. And, you know, here's, here's the thing. Coach Caldwell and, and the style this team plays, it's amazing how the fan base has grown and grown this year again. You used to come here and you basically could sit in a section, you're by yourself. But, I mean, you actually got people that are coming and they're coming with enthusiasm because they love the way this group plays. Thundering Herd and Georgia State about ready for the national anthem and, of course, the starting lineup. So we'll be here for just a couple more minutes. We've got tip time coming up. And don't forget, men's basketball tomorrow. Catch it right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And on 93.7, the dog. And that's just going to kick things off. we got a busy week, Bill. Man, we got so much going on. And, you know, not just Marshall. we got over on our Cats sports stations, Lisa Ashland, Tom Katz, and Kittens basketball. It is just flowing. Lots of sports. And, of course, we're just a few days away from March Madness getting rolling. We are getting set for the national anthem, so we're going to take an optional breakaway here so we can be respectful for the national anthem. So I want to thank Jason Toy back in the studio. Without him, I couldn't be here today, so I appreciate him being able to help out. For Bill Cornwell, I'm Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.
Welcome back to the Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right. A group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, couch purring.